evening, Pio Nation. I hope you're doing well today. My name is Matt Williamson, and you are watching Married to College Esports. So tonight, we are going to be featuring our Super Smash Brothers team, as they are going to be going up against Fair State as part of the Nate Star League Varsity Plus competition. We were supposed to have this match last Thursday, but things had to be rescheduled. So fortunately, we we're able to get it set up for tonight. So you're going to be able to watch this 4v4 crew battle against Fair State. We are getting things set up right now, so let's go over a couple things, such as who's going to be playing today. Now, I think I know who's going to be playing here. I'm guessing, at least from what I've been told, uh, we'll have freshman Ben Baker, uh, Brenman, leading off for the team. Uh, I believe we will also have sophomore Peyton Angle, Ginger Ale playing. I think junior Aether McDonald, Inava will be playing, and also freshman Christopher Stoffel, uh T. Stoffel will also be playing. The screen's a little small for me. That's why I had to, to squint my eyes. So I think those are the four who are going to be playing in today's match. We will see. Also want to give a shout-out to our head coach, Derek Games, Games Grunt, uh, for working with the, the team. But All right. A few announcements uh, while we are getting the lobby set up. So first of all, we do want to give a shout-out to HyperX for being the official peripheral sponsor of Marriott College Esports. Uh, they do provide our facility with keyboards, mice, headsets, mouse pads, uh, microphones. Uh, our students love the, the quality of them. Uh, we do use their Quad X microphone in our broadcasting station. So if you're wondering, hey, that's really cool audio quality. Well, that's because we're using HyperX gear. So if you want to check out HyperX, please be sure to go to hyperx.gg slash ES. The QR code is up on your screen. They got some great deals going on right now, especially on keyboards, mice, and microphones. Uh, so, and well, of course, headsets too. So go check it out. We also want to give a shout out to Over the Moon Pizza for their support. Uh, every Tuesday and Thursday, they have their game night. So if you go to their restaurant on Front Street in Marietta, They'll have a Nintendo Switch available where you can play some Super Smash Brothers or some Mario Kart or some Mario Party. And then, yeah, you can just play some games while you're there and get some pizza and some drinks. But on Tuesdays, they will also be airing the matches that we stream. So usually we uh, will stream Overwatch on Tuesdays. Now, of course, yesterday we were not able to do that for uh, reasons we explained yesterday. But usually on Tuesdays, we'll have Overwatch. So definitely uh, go there next Tuesday as it will be the last match of the Overwatch team for the regular season. But we're pretty sure they're going to advance to the playoffs, so there'll be some more Overwatch even after next week. So definitely go there on Tuesdays to the cheer on uh, our team. And of course, we'll take a minute to thank all of our partners. Uh, so we want to give shout-outs to Buy Blue Light. Uh, we're working with them to get blue light glasses uh, for our students. We want to also thank Elgato. Uh, they were able to help us with getting the face cams that... Uh, we uh, are using for our matches so you can see our students. We also want to thank Incrediware for providing the uh, athletic recovery sleeves and gloves and socks uh, that our students uh, use. They absolutely love them. We also want to thank Kovacs for provi providing the aim training software for our first person shooter students. And we also want to thank MSI for providing monitors for a gaming facility or, or broadcasting station, sorry. And also some prizes for an event that we hope to announce later this week. Uh, we're, we're really excited for it. We're just finalizing some of the logistics, but uh, let's just say there could be something very cool in December that uh, those in the area might be interested in learning more about. Uh, of course, we are always looking for more students for our esports program. We do have varsity titles in Fortnite, League of Legends, Overwatch 2, Rainbow Six Siege, Rocket League, uh, Super Smash Brothers, and Valorant. So we are recruiting for fall 2024. We do have our dedicated facility here on campus that you see during the streams. Uh, we do have coaches for several of our titles. Now, of course, we are still keeping an eye out for a Smash coach. So if you or someone you know uh, would be interested in helping us out, feel free to reach out to us. And we do try to provide academic and wellness support uh, for our students. We want them to be academically eligible. And of course, there are scholarships available for high school seniors and college transfers. Our next tryouts are going to be on Saturday, November 11th in person. And we'll have online tryouts on our Discord server on Sunday, November 12th. So for more information, go to our link tree, linktr.ee slash Esports for all that information. And then finally, thank you all for your support. Uh, thank you for following our Twitch channel. Thank you for subscribing. It is one of our uh, main sources of revenue. So we do appreciate that support. We are working on some things to uh, help out our team. So your gifts are helping making that a reality. Um, but uh, if you have not subscribed yet, there is a thing called Prime Gaming. So if you have Amazon Prime, you can actually subscribe for free 
by connecting your Twitch account to an Amazon Prime account, and that gives you all sorts of perks such as uh, cosmetic items for certain games, uh, or even uh, free games or a free sub. But all right, we are getting things started up here, so let's go ahead and get underway. We are gonna have Breadman starting off for the Pioneers on that King DDD going up against a Ridley for Fair Estate. So we're gonna see how Breadman uh, does in this matchup. Both of them are pretty slow but heavy hitters. But we're going to see Ridley already putting in quite a few attacks onto Breadman. But that hammer is coming in very nicely. Going to try to use the Gordo combo, but doesn't quite get it. But uh, gets a great uh, down smash there. Or, well, it's technically said it. A great another up B move. Gets, goes for the inhale, spits him back out. But Ridley is going to go for that down smash. The fireballs are coming out. Goes for another inhale. Doesn't quite get the... Uh, it's out of range. Goes for the Goro. Doesn't connect. Now Ridley's going to try to shove DDD out. Goes for another Goro hit and it does connect. But they're both already at high percentages. I told you, these guys hit really hard. Those fireballs doing quite a bit of damage for DDD. Going to use that up attack to get back onto the platform. Great recovery there. But we do see they're both flashing red. So one big hit and they're going to be out of the platform. Tries to inhale fireballs, but I don't think that's how it works. Ridley trying to go for the smash attack and going to launch out the Goro. Great counter move, but doesn't quite get it. And DDD is going to get knocked out first. Going to try for go for another Goro play. But yeah, we do see that Ridley does have the range advantage with those fireballs. And he's going to spin him back out and tries to go for the hammer smash, but doesn't connect. And oh my goodness, the combo from the Ridley, but Redman will take out one, but you gotta watch those bottom platform plays. DDD tried to go for a move, but Ridley was just able to use a down smash and recover. So now Redman's down to his last stock. Tries to go for the hammer, goes for the Goro, does land, gets the inhale, but and a nice little hammer attack there, goes for another Goro play. Tries to go for a forward smash, but does does get deflected. You were seeing Ridley is finding ways to counter that Goro, but still getting some damage from that hammer. Another big dash attack coming out. DD's gonna be looking for using that up smash. And Ridley is going to knock out Brenman. So being able to take one stock, but uh Brenman will be out for the uh for the match here. Uh, all right, I think C. Stovall is going to be coming up next. Uh, so, uh, Marietta will get to choose the map. So, we're just going to wait for see uh, what C. Stovall is going to play. I don't know if we've seen him play a lot. But uh, it looks like he's going to be bringing out the Ganondorf. So Ganondorf is one of those that's super slow, but super strong. So now they're going to be doing the uh, the map selections. So we're just waiting to see uh, what the team wants to, to go with. Kind of talk things over. See, uh, see Stoffel looking over the the list of options. So I mean, they, I mean, the way it works is there's like certain maps that you can ban, and then you can decide which one you're gonna go with. So I don't know if they're gonna stick with Hollow Bastion, or if they're gonna go with a, a different map. So they are still talking things over. I think Games Grump is gonna go over a few things with the team or just get a little drink as well. You, you gotta stay hydrated, everyone. 
Have you hydrated yourself lately? If not, go get a drink right now. Uh, yeah, still waiting for the map selections here. So I guess while we're waiting for this, I'm going to just go ahead and bring up the schedule for the rest of this week. Uh, so like I said, right now we're playing against Ferris State. Tomorrow, our Rainbow Six team will be playing against Western Illinois at 7 o'clock. Our Smash team will also be playing against Manchester at the same time. We are going to try an experiment tomorrow to see if we can showcase the Smash match after Rainbow Six. I'll have to check with the team to see uh, how they feel about that, but there might be a way to show the match at least, even though it already happened. So just stay tuned for that tomorrow. But then on Saturday, our Rainbow Six team will have a match against the University of Kentucky at 7 o'clock. So please be sure to come back for that. If the Rainbow Six team wins both of their games this week, there is a very good chance that they will advance to the playoffs uh, in Nace Varsity Premier. So we will see how those matchups go. It is definitely going to be an uphill battle for the Pioneers, but it is definitely possible. Uh, now, it looks like Marietta is still deciding on the map that they uh, want to play. I don't know if we've seen uh, C. Stoffel play in a match yet. If he did, we might not have seen it streamed yet. So this will be possibly his debut uh, on the stream. But it looks like they are going to be choosing the, the map now. Um, and I think it's going to be... They might keep Hollow Bastion, actually. Yeah, they are going to keep Hollow Bastion. Or not. I'm, I'm just waiting over here to see what they're picking. I'm just... This is what I'm looking at, everyone. Actually, I just realized um, I need to fix the score here. I think I hit the wrong button earlier, so it should be... There we go. That looks right. <laughs> Alright, so it is going to be Hollow Bastion. Marietta is ready, so now we're just waiting for uh, Ferris State to join. So here we go. All right, so Ridley will have to drop a stock at the beginning because uh, Bradman was able to take down one. But once again, the advantage might be with Ridley because of the fireball uh, range. So we'll see how C. Stovall can handle this matchup. He's going to have to be able to handle that, but we're going to see a big hit coming out uh, for Ganondorf. Still gets hit by those fireballs. That is going to be the challenge. And a great smash there uh, by C. Stoffel. Gets back onto the platform. It is neck and neck. Now, Ganondorf does not have as much recovery, but he does get back on the platform, and so does Ridley. Tries to go for the sword attack. Doesn't quite connect. Oh, and you hate to see that. That was a misplay from C. Stoffel. We're going to see Ridley trying to get some early damage onto... Yeah, you got to watch for that, that side B attack because you're not able to recover. He tries to go for the attack, but Ridley is going to... Try to use the fireball, and he's not going to be able to get back on the platform. He tries. I see Stoffel is going to be down to his last stock. Tries to go for the kick maneuver, and this, yeah, the problem is he's trying to attack a little bit too soon, and that's giving really a chance to predict. And another missed input, and C. Stoffel is going to be out. So Ferris Day is going to be in the lead right now. Uh, 11 to 6 stocks remaining. Uh, just unfortunate that there were some missed inputs there uh, from C. Stoffel, but uh, hopefully he'll be able to take some lessons uh, from that. So now we'll see who goes next. And it's looking like it's going to be Inava 
uh, going to be playing next for the team. So I think we would expect to see that uh, Min Min coming out for Inava. Uh, he's been doing very well uh, with the uh, the Min Min for the semester. So now they're going to talk about the uh, the maps of what they want to go with. So we're just going to wait things out a little bit. Now we're just you're just kind of playing the waiting game uh, at this moment here. So yeah, they're still talking things over. Yes, I think Gamescraft is going over the uh, the current map bands, but it looks like the map has been decided. And it's going to be Kalos Pokemon League. So Marietta is ready, Fair State is, looks like they're going to be ready. So let's see how Anava does against this Ridley. Okay, so here's the the matchup here. So now we're going to... Still waiting for... Okay, there we go. We have the, uh, the game starting up here. So Ridley is going to take off a stock. All right, so let's see how it does with that long range. Still going to have to watch those fireballs. Goes for the yo-yo smash. Great hit there. And a great follow-up with the arms. Goes for the charge dragon fist. But Ridley going to try to dash away. Great counter there by Inava. Fireball's coming out once again, but what's nice about the Kalos Pokemon League is it looks like the distance is long enough that the Fireballs will go away. Dodges the grab. And a great smash attack there. Gets hit by a couple Fireballs, but nothing too concerning. But yeah, you gotta watch those Fireballs. Ridley going for that combo. Trying to keep the distance up, but Inava is gonna be able to recover. Goes for the charge attack, doesn't quite connect. And what was that? That was a tail type attack. But Anava's still okay, but at a very high percentage, one big smash attack, and it'll be locked out. But Anava is gonna get really tries to go for the kill there, doesn't quite get it. But that's gonna be a huge kill there uh, by really so Anava down a stock. Another big hit there by Anava, looking to finish him off, but not going to get it. Ridley does not recover, so now Ridley's down to his last stock. So we'll see if Inava can take down Ridley before losing another stock. Dodges the down attack, trying to use those arms to keep distance. Big smash attack there, dodging the fireballs. Another set of fireballs. Yeah, we're just seeing Ridley spamming the fireballs like crazy. Nava gets back to the platform, already 100% damage because of those fireballs. Gonna launch in the air, but still alive. But that up smash is gonna take him down. So now Nava's down to the last stock. But yeah, those fireballs definitely being an issue. The big downside, though, with those fireballs is the, the charge time. So if Marietta can capitalize on the fact that Ridley is essentially vulnerable while charging, then they could get the upper hand. A little bit of edge guarding going there to prevent uh, getting taken down. Does get down smashed. And Ridley's going to try to go for another fireball spam. Another launch into the air. Anava's still not out yet, 
But a big up smash there. Ainama still alive. Goes for the down kick. Tries goes for the yo-yo. But that down smash is going to take out Ainava. So only able to drop one stock. So it's going to be off the ginger ale. Marion has only taken two stocks from Ferris State at this point. So ginger ale is going to be coming in as anchor. Definitely has her work cut out. Only able to take down just two stock from Ridley. So we'll see if ginger ale can take down this Ridley and advance in the rounds. But... It's going to be tough. Three stocks to ten. Alright, so we're just waiting... We see Jindra looking over the yeah, just looking over the the map selection, and it looks like we're gonna go with uh, Smashville. And here we go, swapping over the uh, the scores here, but. It is going to be up to Ginger Ale to keep the Pioneers alive in this first game. Really is down to his last stock, so we'll have to drop two at the beginning here. So Ginger Ale trying to go for a quick offensive, but Ridley's trying to dodge everything, but... We're seeing a couple hits already being landed by Ginger Ale. Goes for the stun. Great kick maneuver. Ginger Ale takes a couple hits there. We're going to start seeing that fireball spam. Ginger Ale blocks the up smash. But those fireballs can be still an issue. It's going to shield through it. Great kick maneuver. But now Ridley's going to go for the fireballs again. Tries to go for the grab. Doesn't get it. Eats away a little bit of the shield. So combo's coming out from Ridley. Once again, that fireball spam. Getting that tack in. Goes for the stun. Doesn't quite connect. Ridley gets the grab. And Ginger Ale drops a stock. And a great Lance attack does take Ridley out. So it took several stocks with the Pioneers, but uh, she was able to take down the Ridley. But still has two stocks remaining. And still three opponents to go. So now we will wait to see uh, what Fair State wants to go. They'll get to choose the map. They'll get to choose their next player. But yeah, that Ridley was just... It was really about finding an answer to that Fireball spam. So, and I don't think it's a character that the team has faced a lot. I think maybe one other time they faced against the Ridley. But just having to find a way to get away from those Fireballs, knocking away, or even attacking while vulnerable, uh, could definitely make a difference. So just waiting to see what the uh, the map will be. Hey. 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 
Alright, still waiting for the selection. I don't think it's going to be WarioWare. But alright, we're going to see a Mewtwo actually coming out for Fair Estate. So Jigger will drop a stock. So now we'll see how she does against the Mewtwo. The Mewtwo already putting a lot of damage out. Going for that Shadow Ball. And Ginger Ale is struggling to land a hit onto Mewtwo. Already at 76% damage. Doing a lot of shielding. Goes for another stun, but Mewtwo hasn't landed yet. Starting to get back on the offense and getting to a rhythm against Mewtwo, who has to blink away, dodges the... But that big attack right there is going to take down Ginger Ale, so already down to her last stock. Mewtwo's at 99.9% .9 damage. Trying to dodge as much as he can. Mewtwo has some big attacks. Links away. Perfect block comes out, but a great follow up. It's already trying to charge for the Shadow Ball, doesn't connect. Gets hit by Ginger Ale at 120%. Gets launched in the air. He too goes for the, the tail attack. A big combo there comes out for Mewtwo. Ginger Ale's back, but that's a huge Shadow Ball charged up. Ginger Ale's going to have to dodge that. Well, you can dodge by launching the air. That's that's one way. Dodges the Shadow Ball. Speed 2 goes for the smash. Goes for the kick attack, and it is enough to take him down, so it drops a stop. But still has to get two more. Disrupts the charge. He's still doing quite a bit of shielding. Great kick there by Ginger Ale. Dodges the down smash. Small Shadow Ball comes out. Ginger Ale kind of go for some up smash, but Mewtwo is able to do the damage around him. I don't even know what you call that, but it was for the, uh, the range attack. Mewtwo will teleport. Another great kick there by Ginger Ale. Goes for the stun, doesn't quite get it. Mewtwo getting some damage onto Ginger Ale. Charging up for a Shadow Ball, does dodge it. Mewtwo putting even more damage. Gonna try to go for the finisher, and it does take her down with that up smash. So, Fair State will take that first game with eight stocks remaining. So Marianne was able to take down four uh, fair state stocks, but just was not enough to, to stay in there. So now we're gonna get things set up here uh, for game two. So make sure everything is good on my end. But yeah, I mean, the, the thing with the, it was a pretty balanced fight there with the Mewtwo. I mean, Ginger did a great job of dodging all of the, the Shadow Balls. Mewtwo is definitely doing a lot of shielding, uh, but also a lot of that melee range attack. I don't know what you call that. I'm actually curious. I'm going to do a quick Google search here. What is the name of that attack that Mewtwo was using where he was just kind of like going, ah, but uh, let's see here. Since we have a minute, I might as well look it up because I'm curious. 
So, uh, you two's attacks. So what do they call? call that? That's his final smash. That's not what I want. Uh, well, that that side didn't tell me. That's melee. Let's see here. Still, man, I want ultimate. Move, move list. Okay, let's see here. Uh, no, whip. Quick, no. Tail sweep, no. Dark, to no, I don't think that's it. No, not, not that. Galaxy Force? I think it's Galaxy Force. Oh, no, no, no. Body Spark. There it is. That's what it is. It's, at least the official title, It's they call it a Body Spark, where you just kind of like sparks purple stuff but okay now that, now that we know what's called it's called body spark i don't know if we'll see mewtwo again but it looks like breadman is going to be leading out for game two uh so we're just gonna wait for everything to set up here and we will get this underway looks like they're picking the the lobby music here it's like a little something from uh, Metal Slug coming out. But I think they're still deciding the, the map uh, going into it. So yeah, just we're just kind of waiting here, folks, uh, while they get everything set up for the, uh, the next game. So I guess the only other announcement I have, I'll go ahead and pull it up, is I mentioned earlier about the fact that we do uh, offer tryouts to be a part of the program. So this is for high school seniors and college transfers. Uh, so it's not available to current married to college students. I, I tried, they, they wouldn't let me do that. But if you're a high school senior or college transfer, you can try out. All you gotta do is fill out the recruitment inquiry form at bit.ly slash MC recruit. You can schedule the tryout at bit.ly slash MC eSport tryout. As I was saying before, we will have in-person tryouts on Saturday, November 11th. And we will have in-person, I'm sorry, online tryouts to our Discord server on Sunday, November 12th. So if you are going to do the in-person, uh, I'm sorry, the online tryouts, then you definitely want to join our Discord server at bit.ly slash pio discord. Uh, but uh, yeah, we try to do tryouts once a month. So if you're a high school senior or college transfer, we can try to set that up so that way you can um, try out. We can add a little bit of money to your financial aid package, but we would love to... Uh, provide students that opportunity. So if you or someone you know is looking at esports programs in the, the collegiate scene, we'd be more than happy to, to talk with them. Uh, all right, so we're still waiting for the map selection. Uh, I think Brandman is just kind of looking over the list. And he wants to make sure he gets the right map for uh, King DDD. In fact, uh, we'll go ahead and Move over to the lobby so you can even hear that lobby music. And that's some good music right there. But they are talking things over, so we'll see uh, what they want to go with. They are still looking things over. We see Breadman with the, the piece of paper that has the, the maps. So it looks like he has made his selection, so they're going to let Ferris State know uh, what the map will be. It looks like it's going to be small battlefield. And I think this is because DDD wants more close range. So it's trying to shorten the space so that way he can, if he does like his up attacks, then he can possibly be able to do some damage to the opponent. But it's got to be careful too because if, you, if you're not careful, you may end up like launch yourself off the platform.
That looks like Fair Estate is ready, so now we're just waiting for uh, Marietta to be ready. And we will swap the sides here. Well, like, yeah, we'll swap this. There we go. That's what we want. We want Fair Estate on the, the left side. And we're going to see Pokemon Trainer come out. I know, chat, you're talking about Pokemon cards, but here you go. Here's some. Here's a Pokemon Trainer as the opponent. So we're going to see how this Pokemon Trainer works. He's going to go straight for Squirtle. I mean, Squirtle is a lightweight, but very fast. Can do some quick attacks. You see Breadman going for the inhale. But Squirtle's doing quite a bit of damage here to DDD, trying to launch him into the air. Gonna use his up attack, swaps out to Ivysaur. You see the Gordo coming out, but not gonna connect. Spits back out the the uh the Razor Leaf. But yeah, that attack could have been devastating there. And that will take down one stock from Breadman. Tries to go for the Gore attack. Does land. Goes for the inhale. Doesn't get it. But does get attack off onto Ivysaur. Goes for a hammer attack. Doesn't quite get it. Ivysaur doing some big damage there. Uh, goes for the up smash. Doesn't quite get it. Goes for another Goro. Does not get the inhale. That's the, goes for the up attack. Does get a hit onto Ivysaur. Goes for the another Goro inhale, but spits back out the Razor Leaf. Gets the inhale out. And gets a great stock off. So now we're going to see Charizard coming out. DDD already getting some hits onto Charizard. But it's going to swap right back to Squirtle. And we're seeing what Squirtle does have the advantage of being much faster than DDD. It's going to try to spin it back out. Goes for the hammer attack. Doesn't quite get it. Squirtle's trying to launch him near as much as possible. Already at 99%, over 100% damage at this point. Great hammer swing, goes for the Goro attack. Inhales Squirtle, spits him back out. Goes for the up attack. Squirtle did shield it. Swaps out to Ivysaur, goes for another inhale, goes for the hammer combo, doesn't quite get it. And that Goro does get reflected by the uh, Razor Leaf. Goes for another inhale and actually gets the Ivysaur but doesn't get the follow-up. Redman will be able to get back onto the platform, but Ivysaur is going to launch him into the air, dropping down a stock. Ivysaur's at 98, so this can still be a pretty close matchup. Swaps out for Charizard. He goes for a big body slam attack. Goes for the inhale. It is not effective. But the Goro hit will launch him out, and that is super effective, folks. So we're down to one stock apiece. Squirtle will come back out. Trying to get some early hits onto DDD. But that Goro does get deflected by Squirtle. But so far, uh, Bremen has not landed attack damage onto the Squirtle. Spits back the girl and now does connect. So we're seeing that girl can hit pretty hard. Just one attack does 14% damage. And Squirtle will misclick and Bremen will take the round. Trying to go for the up attack but couldn't get back to the platform. So Bremen will take the first round on King DDD. You see the excitement in his face. He's like, I did, I got it.
So now Ferris State will choose the next opponent and the map. Of course, Breadman was still in there on the DDD. So now we'll just have to see what the selections are. So we're just going to have to give it a minute uh, while we're waiting there. But, I mean, yeah, that was just so back and forth uh, between them. And Brandon was going for the combinations with the Goro inhale and also trying to inhale the player, launch him off the platform, and then use the hammer to make them fly. It just has to be a little quicker uh, on that combo. But I can see that being a really good play. I can definitely can tell that he's been studying DDD uh, all semester, trying to find those right combinations, especially like inhaling the Goro and spinning it back out. So we're still waiting for these selections. Yeah, so they're just talking things over with each other. Still talking things over. So appreciate everyone's patience as we're waiting. All right, I think they have the selection. So now we're going to see uh, what the map will be. Looks like it's going to still be small oh battlefield. So, all right, and now it's going to be King Karul. So, interesting matchup with this. Now, Brendan will have to drop two stocks, but King Karul is one that has a really good recovery, can get perfect shields more easily, and also can be a big heavy hitter. So they drop the second stock. So everyone is ready. So already quick Goro attack gets the inhale onto Karul. Throws out the crown, but it does come back out. And those that gun can hit pretty hard. Although DDD can't inhale the cannonball. So we'll see if he can counter the attack. And we see the crown actually countering the uh, the Goro as well. Goes for the hammer attack, doesn't quite get it. Tries to go for the attack, gets the inhale. Dodges the hammer attack, and but that big punch is gonna take him out very quickly. So unfortunately, Bradman was not able to take down Karul. Did get some good damage on him though. But, and he tried to go for the finisher, but Karul was able to dodge both of the inhale combo attacks. So, all right. Uh, now we'll see who's going to be playing next. It looks like Ginger Ale is going to be coming up second to go up against the uh, the Karul. That is the one advantage that you have if you do take that first round. Is that since you know what your opponent's going to play, you can decide who are you going to play against that. So... They're going to go a little different order here and decide to use the Corrent to go up against the Karul. And Marina will get to choose the map, so we'll see what Ginger Ale 
uh, wants to go with. So they are talking things over. It looks like it's going to be small battlefield still. So Marietta is ready, so we're going to swap over here. Now I'm just going to wait for uh, Fair State to be ready. And here we go. And since no stocks were dropped, they're going to go straight into this matchup. So we're going to see how Ginger Ellen Corn goes against this King K. Rule. Gonna have to dodge the crowns, the cannonballs. There goes the crowd, doesn't connect. Throws the cannonball, but it's gonna be able to recover. Goes for the kick. Dodges the body slam. Great lance attack there from Korn. Does get hit by the crowd there. Dodges the cannonball. So Ginger is definitely trying to use the uh, distance to dodge a lot of Karul's attacks. They hit hard, but they are slow as well. Dodges the punching glove. Goes for the stun, doesn't quite get it. Ginger Ale's doing very well against the crew, already getting to 75, but does get hit by the crown. But yeah, that crown and cannonball combo can be pretty difficult. Dodges does take a little bit of hit from the, the belly flop. Tries to go for the lance. Doesn't quite connect. That down attack does connect, though. Tries to go for a smash. Dodges the crown once again. And the cannonball. But gets hit by the belly flop. But a great up attack there by Jadir. Tries to go for the lance attack. Karul's already at 96%. Great smash combo there. Dodges the cannonball just barely. And the crown. Tries to go for the lance attack. Doesn't quite get it. The kick does get shielded. And a big belly flop there. But getting a little bit of FPS issue. And Ginger Ale is just not able to get back uh, onto the platform. And I think something happened with our uh, streaming machine that was working on the uh, set. The audio is going to sound a little weird, but uh, we're going to roll with it for now. Karul is still at 142%. But a great stun there. And that's going to take out Karul. So now it's tied up one apiece. Ginger only at 34%. But that perfect shield, uh, well, counter after counter, and Ginger is going to even up the damage and now take a bit of a lead. Gets another kick onto Karul, gets hit by the crown though, dodges the cannonball. But that belly shield can be devastating. Gets hit by the cannonball. Gets hit by the boxing glove. Goes for the lance attack, doesn't quite get it, but a good down attack there and launches Karul in the air. Goes for the stun, actually deflects the crown. It's another great kick, but it's now tied up, 126% each. Goes for another stun and it does connect, but it's just not enough to finish him off. He's going to fly back up. Karul goes for the, the belly shield. Tries to go for the stun. And another perfect belly block. This is so neck and neck. Gotta dodge the crown. Dodges it again. 
Great at launch there by Ginger Ale. But still not enough to get him off the platform. Another launch, 187%. Gruel's able to get back up. He just has insane recovery. That still doesn't do it. He's at 194%. That one did it. But now Ginger is at 145%. Now I gotta try to get some attacks in, but now it's at 160%. Ginger gets back onto the platform. Goes to the grab. The shield gets kicked. And now I'm gonna get launched. So it is neck and neck, one stock apiece, 0% damage. Ginger tries to go for the quick play, doesn't get it. Karul is gonna try to smash down. Dodges the belly flop. Goes for the combo. Dodges another belly flop, but gets hit by the crown. Needs to dodge the cannonball. Is able to do so. Does get the lance attack off. Gets a little bit of a stun. Tries to go for the finisher. Doesn't quite get it. Dodges the boxing glove. Able to get the kick off. Dodges the crown. Stops the cannonball, gets a great down attack, and a follow-up launch. Karul's at 100%. The ground actually deflects the stun. Gets a great kick, great patience there from Ginger Ale. A little bit of back and forth here. Karul's at 123%. One big attack might be enough to take him out. Gets hit a little bit by the attack. Goes for the lance. Doesn't quite get it. Goes for another lance attack. We see. And with that, Karul is out. Ginger Ale will take that round. All right. I'm going to give it a second here to see... Um, if the uh, I'm gonna swap over to another screen real quick because I'm gonna try to check on the audio and see if I can just reset things on the other computer. So let's take a look at Twitch Prime. There you go. Subscribe to Twitch Prime. I'll be right back. One second. All right, appreciate everyone's patience. Um, that should, yeah, that sounds like it's better. So, all right, so let me swap back over here real quick. So, all right, Marietta is up by one stock here. And now we're gonna see Greninja coming out for uh, Fair State. Man, it might be a shiny Greninja. Alright, so Jujero's gonna have to drop two stock. So here we go. Let's see if Jujero can get uh, take out Greninja. Gets the kick off. And another nice little combo there. Goes for the stun. Doesn't quite get it. Jin, uh, Greninja is definitely a very fast character and also have to be very mindful of the counter attacks. I played a little bit of Greninja myself and definitely can hit hard with the shurikens, but so far Ginger Ale is playing phenomenal against this Greninja. Greninja does drop back up onto the platform, but at 96% already, 
goes for the down B, doesn't quite get it. He has kind of that, that shadow type strike. Great patience there. Goes for the counter while in air. A great kick there. Launches Greninja in the air. Still alive though. Dodges the Shuriken. Another launch in the air. Greninja at 137%. Goes to the Lance Attack, doesn't get it. Another great kick, and does take down one stock of Greninja. Dodges the Shadow Strike. Great Lance Attack. Goes to the Stun, doesn't connect, but a jaw right there does connect. Another great Down Attack. It's another chop onto Greninja. Greninja needs to try to counter that. You have the moves to do it. Goes through the upshot smash. Doesn't connect. Great attack there from Ginger. Already getting Greninja to 100%. Huge patience from Ginger Ale. Already taking Greninja down to his last stock. And Ginger Ale's only taken 22% damage this entire time. Ginger Ale go... I mean... Greninja goes for the Water Shuriken. The Shadow Strike doesn't connect. But now Greninja is getting more onto the offense. Dodges the up smash, keeping Greninja in the air. That is kind of one of his weak points. He's not a very good aerial attacker. Goes for the counter, but Greninja is going to go for that Water Shuriken and that is going to take, no, it does not take down Ginger Ale, still up. Goes for the kick, dodges. Goes for another kick, just gets away, goes for the stun. That water shuriken is hitting really hard. Ginger on that 121%. Goes for the down smash. Gets away with the kick, goes for the shadow strike and the combo. Dodges the shadow strike again. Water shuriken coming out, dodges that. Dodges the smash attack. Greninja does a down smash himself, but counters the water shuriken, launches him in the air, goes for the lance, doesn't connect. Now at 101%, both are a kill potential, and she gets it! Ginger Ale able to 3 0 the Greninja and is still alive. So now Fair State is down to their last player here and if ginger ale can take it we will go to game three folks but ginger ale oh my goodness just played phenomenally well against the uh, the greninja just able to dodge so many of his attacks that's because she played against me on greninja during the tournament last month last semester that's a that's totally why she knows how to counter a greninja But now I'm just gonna wait for the map selections. So we'll see what Fair State wants to do. They, with their last player, it could very well be that Ridley again that we saw in game one. In fact, I would not be surprised if Fair State decided to go with the, the Ridley. But no, we're going to see Princess Peach coming out. Okay. Interesting choice. I don't know if I've seen Princess Peach in a competitive Smash match before. Warren's going to have to drop two stock. But all right, let's see if Corrin can take down this Peach and get the Pioneers to game three. Already landed some quick attacks. Great combo there. Maybe Peach is gonna be used to use the Toad ability to counter some of uh, Korn's attacks. Goes for the stun. Great kick there by Korn. 
Jujaro goes for the kick, dodges it. Peach floats into the air. And so far, Jinjiro playing very well, but gets countered by the Toad. Dodges the vegetable. Goes for the stun, doesn't quite get it. Jinjiro goes for the counter, has the Toad available just in case. But Peach already doing quite a bit of damage onto Corrin, and Gor Jinjiro is not going to be able to recover. So Peach will take down Jinjiro, but still, Jinjiro playing very well. So now we'll see who's going to be next. It looks like it's going to be Sea Stoffel uh, for the next game here. So we'll see if he's going to bring out the Ganondorf or he's going to go with something else. Looks like we're going to see Ganondorf once again. Now we're just waiting for the maps. Marietta will get to choose which map they want to play on. Still looking things over. All right, so it looks like it's going to be Final Destination. So we're going to see how C. Stoffel does. We saw the last time we played, had a couple missed inputs. And what's going to be a little challenging with this is Ganondorf is a very slow character. Peach is very floaty, so she may try to dodge a lot of his attacks. So we'll see if C. Stoffel can find a way to connect those hits. I already see the turn up ready. So if it gets a big hit, it goes for the sword attack, but does get eaten by the shield. Gets a kick in. But that sword is a very long sword, so it just has to get within close enough range for that sword to hit. Already getting Peach to 76%. Goes for that down smash. Peach is going to try to keep him in the air. We already see Gandor at quite a bit of damage. Trying to get him away. And that is one of the weaknesses with Ganondorf. Is just a lack of recovery. A great attack there uh, by C. Stoffel. Peach once again keeping him in the air. Goes for that air dodge early on, which really exposes him to some possible attacks. Goes for the sword attack, doesn't connect, goes for the kick. Peach once again trying to keep him in the air, but does not have the recovery. So now we see C. Stoffel down to his last stock. Oh! 
a big charge attack from that sword though does take down one stock on the beach once again trying to get that distance so that he cannot recover and he will not so sea stovo does get one stock off of peach but he is going to go down that means fair state is going to be able to close up the difference two to three so it's going to be up to inava to try to get the team to, to go to game three So we are going to see that Min Min coming out. So they're still talking things over on what map they're going to be on. Obviously, it's going to be the mid min, which does have the distance to get some long range attacks onto Peach. And it looks like they're going to go with Hollow Bastion. We'll swap over here because I think Inava is ready. So now we're just waiting for Fair State to be ready. So here we go. If Inava can win this, Marietta will go to game three. And Inava's preferring to stand while playing. Speech will drop a stock. So everyone is ready. Great yo yo attack coming out for Inava already. Using those long arms as an advantage, Peach is going to try to shield again for that close range combat. Peach using the, the golf club. Has to turn up ready, but gets kicked by Ainava. Goes for the yo yo and the dragon punch. Doesn't quite connect. Is able to float away. Goes for that hard attack. That's what I'm going to call it. And that turn up just disrupted Ainava to drop a stock as a result. Gets shielded. But Inaba's trying to get some damage back with the Peach. Already at 98%. He's once again going to try to make sure that Nava cannot get back. Dodges the turn up. Goes for the smash attack. Already at 110%. Goes for the kick. Dodges the up smash. And a huge hit. Peach is down to her last stock. So can Inaba take down one more to go to that game three? Dodges the turn up. Launches Inaba in the air. Connects, kicks the turn up. Gets back onto the platform. Tries to get away from Peach. He's going to use that heart attack. Gets Next, dodges the turn up. Goes for the yo-yo, doesn't quite connect. Trying to go for the wombo combo. But this is it, folks. One last stock each. It's definitely a little nerve-wracking here. Peach getting some damage onto Anava at 1734. Now he's going to take the lead on the damage. Gets a great attack in there, dodges the, the, both turnups. Goes to the charge yo-yo, doesn't quite get it. And just like that, uses the distance out there to knock her out. And unfortunately, the Pioneers will not win that game. It was so close. 
So with that, Fair State will take the series two to zero. But that is some of the best play that we have seen from the Smash team all season. So you can tell that they are improving. But unfortunately, Peach was just able to get Min Min far enough away to for one good attack to just launch them out of the of the game. So that is going to be it for us today. Um, but as a reminder, tomorrow our Rainbow Six team will be playing at seven o'clock. So are Smash team, and we're gonna. I got an idea on how we can try to showcase Smash. I'll work with the team to see if that's possible. So hopefully we'll be able to do something with it uh, after the Siege game. So please be sure to come back tomorrow. So for all the latest updates on what's going on with Marriott College Esports, please be sure to follow us here on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Shoutouts to all of our supporters, HyperX for being the official peripheral sponsor of Marriott College Esports. We also want to thank Bye Blue Lights. Uh, Elgato, Over the Moon Pizza, Incrediware, Kovacs, and MSI. Thank you all for your follows. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you for your subscriptions. And we hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Have a good night.